hello everybody. Um, I suspect Malalai doesn't really need much introduction f uh, to most of you. I suspect some of you were probably here last year. Uh, she's back again for a book tour. Her first book, Raising My Voice, is uh, just out, which I'm sure you'll all be rushing to buy at the end of this. We're very lucky to have her here. She, um, she struggled to do this tour. Uh, they tried very hard to stop her getting a visa. Um, and she did get to Australia, which was a sellout book tour. And uh, now she's managed to come here. So welcome, Madeline. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to start on a sad note, really. Uh, the last time she was on this stage, she won the Anna Polakowska Award. Um, and the lady that gave her that award was Natasha Estimarova, who um, also many of you will know uh, was killed a few weeks ago for her very strong work in Chechnya. Um, and she said to Malalai when Malalai met her, be brave. Did that have an impact on you at the time? Yes, of course. It means a lot for me that uh, First, let me say that this is the gift of Natasha, who gave me and explained that uh, um, and this is from Chechnya. And as it's material, but now it means uh, a lot for me as a moral, it has moral value for me as well. And it's true that uh, these uh, fascist people killed Natasha, and they killed many Natashas. But as always, I'm saying, uh, to uh, kill the democratic-minded people is easy, but they never can hide the truth and make uh, silence their voice. I offered uh, my condolences uh, to her f families, especially to her daughter, that uh, uh, first of all, she must change uh, all of these sorrows and tears uh, to mm, mm, strength, that uh, stand up and follow the path of her daughter. And also for all of us, uh, uh, the best way that, uh, to support her is that uh, uh, do not sit silence and uh, uh, follow her path, the path of the, um, democracy, the path of uh, justice. As uh, always, I'm saying the um, uh, injustice anywhere is they start to justice uh, everywhere. And I think uh, uh, the quote that always I say, it means a lot for me that uh, they can destroy all of the flowers, but they never can stop the spring. I know you feel strongly about, about journalism, about the Frontline Club, um, possibly one of the reasons you've written down your own life story in the book. And I know you want to say a few words about the Frontline Club, don't you? Yes, of course, that uh, you start about uh, dear Natasha, that uh, she's not here uh, among us today, which is so sad last time I met her. But this Frontline Club itself means a lot for me, which is a, a champion um, uh, of free and independent journalism, while in our country that we don't have freedom for press and also freedom of speech, which is an elementary part of uh, uh, democracy. Because sworn enemies of democracy, women rights, human rights, they are in power in Afghanistan. Last year, for bloody years, for the journalists, they are kidnapping the journalists, killing them, even beheaded them, and still they continue uh, their a crime against them. As uh, some of them dare to tell the truth, and the truth uh, is the first casualty in war countries like Afghanistan. And um, brave journalists sometimes that they play their role and they dare and they stand up against these injustices and reflect some violences and uh, tell the truth and tear the mask of these warlords, but they receive death threats. And even many of them has been killed, like Zeki Zeki and Parwan has been killed. Um, like uh, Shiki Basangama, who was a young journalist in Kabul under the nose and eyes of thousands, youth and eyes of troops has been killed. Um, Na Ajmal Naqshbendi was a young journalist that became beheaded by Taliban. And um, also, uh, Nadi Anjiman was a poet, and Herat has been killed. And many activists, like uh, Malalai Kakar in Kandahar, has been killed. Sitar Achik, they maybe you heard uh, recently, and Kandahar has been killed. This list can be prolonged that as killing of uh, women, especially for them, is like killing of bird. But today, men and women of my country suffer from injustice, violences, uh, insecurity, uh, joblessness, poverty, poverty etc. <coughs> What's the message of the book? What were you hoping people would get from reading about your life so far? Yeah, first, uh, let me say that um, 
Now, yeah, uh, in the beginning, I would like to thank uh, dear uh, Derek O'Coffey, um, who um, uh, encouraged me to write this book and share uh, my stories through uh, this book. And uh, for her, for his uh, countless hours. Uh, we should uh, say he's sitting, yeah. standing at the back uh, of the room. Gives away. <laughs> yeah, he's here. <laughs> and also um, uh, that, as uh, for years, uh, supporters asked me to write uh, a book on my life. I didn't agree, and I told them I introduced for you some orphans, some widows, some other activists that who are risking their lives. That always I'm saying they are the secret hero and heroines of our country. That nobody know them. You should write about them, but they said no. Uh, you should uh, share uh, the sorrows of your people and also to write about the role of other world generation and democrat people of your country about them as well. You should write in this book. And it has three reasons that I accept to write this book. First, uh, to tell the truth, as uh, uh, always uh, truth getting suppressed uh, and still getting uh, uh, betrayed in Afghanistan. And uh, second, uh, that. Uh, to expose the most of uh, most of these fundamentalist warlords, that most of them right now they are in power, who are brother and creed of Taliban, and the third reason that I accept uh, as a tip of the iceberg the sorrows and pain of my people reflect in this book, while I believe that books is not enough to write about the so much tragedies of my country, especially this 30 years war. But as a war generation, on behalf of war generation, this book is about not me, about a generation of my country and generations, that even children, and as most of them, women and children was the victim. And hopefully this book will uh, be, uh, will uh, open the uh, mind and eyes of democratic-minded people around the world and will bring international solidarity that we need in Afghanistan and practical support of democratic-minded men and women, peace-loving, anti-war movements, um, uh, uh, around the world, including here in UK. <coughs> Alala, you've had five death threats against you. Um, I would have thought this book would make you even more of a target, even more of them wanting to silence you than speaking out. Just give us an idea what life is like for you when you're back home in Farah. How much effort do you have to take to staying safe? First, let me say that, unfortunately, I can't live in my own province, not only in Faro province that there I represented in parliament and they voted me, but uh, around Afghanistan that I'm receiving support. They invite me, people, to uh, come and meet them. Even they ask me to run for the election, the selection, which a parliamentary election will come in Afghanistan. Uh, to want to show their support as uh, I want to go there. But unfortunately, because of security, I can't. And even in Kabul, not safe. And if you compare my life with the period, with the period of <coughs> Taliban, on that time I was activist on that uh, dark period that these terrorist people was in power. Under Burka, I was activist, teacher for girls and women's <coughs> underground. Uh, but now, even with Burka and with bodyguard, it's not safe. And changing safe house to safe house, and it depends to the area. Sometimes happen in one week, every day changing. Sometimes happen three days in a house. And different ways and tricks I use that just to be alive. For example, with a woman, we are Burka, not talking in a place, make appointment with uh, my bodyguards. And different ways just to be alive. So you wear the burqa when you're outside of your house. You stay at different people's houses. You trust your bodyguards? Of course I trust my bodyguards. <coughs> they are um, not only some of them my relatives, as in this book also I write that uh, um, the head of my bodyguard is my anchor. And also um, that the others, some of them are my old supporters from 2003 that until now. And uh, they are agree that the most important the point is that to trust. While I have trust on most of my people, I have I pr so proudful for the history of my country. And but uh, now uh, my bodyguards that I have, uh, um, the government, the two years that they expelled, also they <coughs> pay nothing for them, and uh, they are risking their life and not be, uh, even that much money that I pay for them is very less. Even it means nothing. But they risking their life and accept this risk and didn't leave me alone. And I love them more than my family. Mm -hmm. Everyone, my <laughs> friend. Perhaps we should talk a little bit about um, why they have taken uh, 
death threats out against you. Just if you could run people through that maybe don't know the story of when you were elected, what happened in the parliament and why you were suspended. Oh, it has a long answer, but <laughs> I try my best to, to, as much as I can, to answer brief that. Uh, yeah, first time in 2003 I become elected. Maybe you hear through media that uh, because of telling the truth and expose the mask of these warlords briefly and the uh, Jirka, which was quite non-democratic situation. And these warlords, as they control Loi Jirka, <coughs> they couldn't tolerate. Democrat representative in Loi Jirga that when we made, we made constitution was very few. We can count them. Same like in this non-democratic parliament that we have, mafia parliament. But uh, um, after that, my life has been changed. And then uh, in 2005, that again I ran for the election as people are come and ask to run for the election. Uh, because of campaign, I couldn't go, uh, sorry, because of risk, I couldn't go uh, everywhere like before of 2003 that uh, I went uh, even to far away villages, district, close contact with people. And they did campaign, and you see in the documentary of Enemies of Happiness as a tip of the iceberg, also the sorrows of people reflect and also their support. And they did campaign, and I found we in parliament. The reason that how I found we in parliament, because first, uh, let me say that because I was very famous in the meantime. Uh, not in Afghanistan, around the world. And their cheating was so clear, not for my people, for the world, if they do not allow me, which was very easy for them. But they allow other few other Democrats as well to be in the parliament to deceive you people around the world, that there is democracy and someone like Julia is in parliament, and, but never want to talk about that, which kind of condition we have inside of parliament. My personal experience uh, as a Democrat MP that even they beat it, they threatened to rape inside of parliament, threatened to date, and many, many uh, um, memories like that. Uh, only this point is enough that to be like torture. Every corner I saw a killer, a loader, a warlord, a criminal, a puppet was set. Only few Democrats was in the parliament. But uh, from the beginning of parliament, as most of these warlords, they know who am I and why I'm there. Uh, they, as in the beginning of parliament, uh, uh, every parliamentarian saying congratulations to each other. But I paid condolences to my, payment, um, to my uh, people, suffer people for this kind of parliament, that as they did, they did cheating, they used gun, they control Afghanistan, they were in power, and they found way in our national house. As I said two years before, it's the worst than animal stable, it's like zoo. And I stress on my comments again that because of these crimes that these parliamentarians now doing, not only in the past they did, um, even I insulted some useful animals that, as I said, apologize to useful animals. <laughs> and that's why they expelled me from parliament and couldn't uh, tolerate to be inside of parliament as a political conspiracy that censored my interview and used it against me. One TV uh, that censored my interview used it against me. Another TV, because of their own uh, campaign, they are asking from people from, uh, from the fresh news. Uh, they, uh, that on that time was a fresh news, uh, my suspension question from people, are you agree with Julia? She is um, saying this parliament is worse than animal stable. They, 80% um, people did SMS yes, 20% said no. Another night they asked a question, can she go back to the parliament? 90% said is that SMS yes, only 10% said no. It self proves how much people they are support, but if a TV go there or a journalist go there, of course they are afraid, who guaranteed their life? What are the chances of you getting back into Parliament? The chance is very less. <laughs> Let me tell you that a uh, few months before, my uh, defence lawyer went uh, mm, to the Parliament, as it has a long story that when I, how I got defence lawyer, it, it was very difficult. Even some Democrats, they asked lots of money from me just to hide their fear, not to know that I don't have that much money. I never paid money for to be my defense lawyer. Anyway, but one Democrat young uh, um, a lawyer follow my case. But in the beginning, that went to or want to go to the parliament to discuss this law. Uh, in the back of the door of parliament, response was that anyone in the name of Julius coming must not enter in the parliament. 
but uh, because they are under pressure from international um, democrat people and human and rights organizations and IPU, maybe you know the center is here, Interparliamentary Union. These democrat supporters also follow my case, which is quite a legal act and anti-freedom of speech. Because they are under much pressure, but uh, they finally three months before, they allowed my defense lawyer to enter the parliament to discuss about the law. But uh, we, uh, we have 18 commission. One commission is complaining commission. And um, he went there as uh, any kind of crimes or illegal act they do, and they discuss in this commission. And uh, to my defense lawyer, the head of this commission, his name is Shalgari. He is a commander of Sayof. And he's famous in his prowess in Ghazni as a head eater, because killing people and a very cruel man. And he answers to my defense lawyer instead to legally discuss, say that that we expelled her from parliament is not enough. You must punish her with Kalashnikov, with gun. So you should think that when inside of national house they are talking with the language of gun, how about around Afghanistan? You're wearing a pin badge there that says troops out of Afghanistan. And you know here that we get reports of British troops being killed almost on a daily basis. I think uh, 22 a month is the latest tally. And people here still are firmly in support of British troops because they think it keeps people safe back home. Is it true? Yes, 100% true. And in the meantime, let me tell you that before uh, to, um, uh, as uh, I said, I, yes, I agree with that. Um, a little bit to explain the situation, that why we say this government, US and its allies, is not honest for Afghan people. And these troops themselves, they are the victim of the wrong policies of their government. Through you, Democrat people here, uh, I, pay, mm, I pay condolences on behalf of my people to those families who lost their sons, loved husbands in Afghanistan. If you pass to them, our condolences and tell them that they are the one who, first of all, raised their voice against the wrong policy of their government. As seven years ago, U.S. and its allies, they occupied Afghanistan under the name of women rights, human rights, democracy, um, while in the meantime, they betrayed these values. Because they brought in power the Northern Alliance fundamentalists that from 92 to 96, they did civil war. When Taliban come in power, they become like mice escaped in their holes. And again, these mice become wolf and imposed on our people, just only physically has been changed. With suit and tie, they come in power. And these wolves, they are receiving more money, more weapon, and more power from their foreign masters means U.S. and its allies, including U.K. government, that the Sawan has followed the wrong policy of U.S. government, which is not only mockery of democracy and mockery of war on terror. I think it's a just war crime. Do you know what they did in Afghanistan? Uh, in Far Province recently, when Obama took office, um, on May, they threw bombing from the sky. Even they used white phosphorus that more than 150 civilians has been killed, most of them women and children. And I, I post for you some, some of these pictures. See that? This is 150 civilians and this graves. This is a baby who, who is right now in the hospital. This is the picture of another baby. Most of them was women and children. This is a picture of mom, a mother of my country. See that? To know about the realities of Afghanistan and role of these troops and their government and this baby. And this is in Kandahar they did white phosphorus they used. And all of these pictures here is a lot. Only these pictures is enough to know about the deep tragedy of Afghanistan. I pass to you. If you see, it says I should everything. Say they are quite upsetting, some of them. So if you, uh, and, and you don't also, want to look, please don't. And also to know better about the wrong policy of US government, only this picture is enough to how they play the game of Tom and Jerry with these terrorists, the Sawaniyas. This is one person, person, his name is Mullah Rahmatullah Hashimi. He was a spokesperson of Taliban. And he, when they destroyed our border status, he defensed. But now, 
this man. But now, doing shave, wearing suit and tie, and looks more Democrat than any other Democrats. And enjoying in the Yale University, one of the best university of US. Why he's not going to Guantanamo jail? And, and see that. This is the picture that they are saying. Uh, let me say that now we, we talk about Taliban, that this is not only one Talib who, who they do like this. You know, Mullah Abdul Salam Rakiti, member of the parliament, who raped China, China's woman when Taliban was in power, three Chinese women. And uh, Mullah Asala Rahmani is uh, uh, he's not appoint, elected, he's appointed by Karzai in Jaig in Sanat. Mullah Mutawakkil, foreign minister of Taliban, has good life with ambassador of Taliban who was in Pakistan, Mullah Abdul Salam Zaif. In Pakistan, they have, uh, sorry, in uh, Kabul, in safest place, they have good life. And now only Mullah Omar is not in power, want de to decorate as a moderate to join this non-democratic mafia system in this picture. Let me just ask you a question quickly on the Taliban. Um, David Miliband, the Foreign Secretary, yesterday was saying that it's time, if they renounce violence, to, to negotiate and to talk to the Taliban. What's your reaction to that? Of course, that uh, as always, I'm saying these politicians who are in power, so-called politicians, they do just dirty game with politics. They deceiving people around the world, also our people, while they deceive themselves, I think, forever they never can deceive anyone. At now, as now it become like open secret for you people as well. Why you are tonight here? Or uh, why you are a big question for you that this so one year situation goes to a disaster? In many other questions, situation of women, day by day getting worse as today, violences against women in these uh, rape cases is historical. Anyway, we have no moderate talib. These are terrorist talib that who are terrible makers. As I said last night when I had live interview, maybe some of you watched that. Um, uh, uh, these, uh, oh my God, the question was about uh, uh, last night that they asked me. About the Taliban? Yeah, the, uh, this Taliban, no, the, this was another point. It, it belongs that exposed the uh, wrong policy of U.S. government in Afghanistan anyway. But uh, they uh, brought in, uh, they want to bring in power. To, yeah, uh, sorry, now I remember. I'm so tired, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I was busy there. And um, uh, for example, before, they said that uh, we want to negotiate with uh, bring in power Mullah Omar. Uh, Cause they also, while, while they put a seat on face of 15 girls in Kandahar, only a few days after that, and white Mullah to join the government. Yesterday, they won, they invite Mullah Omar, but today they say moderate Talib. And white moderate Talib, who is moderate Talib? And second, that how they recognize moderate Talib, who is moderate Talib, who is not moderate Talib. And also, that uh, it also it means that they, they prove that this seven years they face their time, their blood and also their money in Afghanistan. And these terrorists also come in power. The situation will be more worse, more bloody. Anyway, um, just they are deceiving and put dust on the eyes of the people around the world. Does President Karzai need the Taliban to get re-elected? Is he reliant on the Taliban to support him? You know, uh, uh, first of all, Mr. Miliburn, if really support and honest for Afghan people and U.S. government, this election is coming, which is so ridiculous, and it's a showcase of U.S. government that uh, even Taliban running for the election. While we have in our constitution that those accused as war criminal, they must not run for the election. And instead, that Mr. Meliburn is saying that uh, a moderate Talib must join the government, situation will be wor worse. He must say, well, announce, ha raise his voice against this wrong policy that this uh, 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 Taliban are even running for the election. And Karzai, this shameless puppet man again running for the election, that this seven years he was in power. And, and, and first responsibility he has that they, he changed Afghanistan to the safe haven for terrorism and fundamentalism and drug mafia because he's puppet of U.S. and its allies. And as their masters uh, wish they do there, as they keep situation in danger like this to stay longer in Afghanistan, now has two uh, vice president that he chose, there's two infamous killer, one uh, Karim Khalili, one Qasim Fahim, that uh, uh, even human rights watch said Karzai insulting uh, the people of Afghanistan with this act. But I'm saying 
he's betraying my people. Anyway, but if, if the daughter of Mr. Melbourne uh, get uh, raped by these warlords, gang rape, if the wife of Mr. Melbourne get peace peace, what they did in Faro province, Again, he invite these terrorist people to join the government. Just they want to make the circle of warlordism, draglordism, terrorism to be complete. Because only Mullah Omar in Gulbuddin is not in power, this fascist man. At least Bush put price on the head of Gulbuddin, this terrorist man, to, to uh, if anybody find the died or alive body of this man, they are giving money, price. But Obama invite this man to join the government. And the politicians tell us that if the troops are brought out of Afghanistan, it will descend into chaos. Yeah, as I explained a little bit, as a tip of the iceberg, I said all of these examples that um, uh, these regarding uh, the wrong policy of U.S. government and its allies, that they are not honest in supporting this criminal situation, will be more worse. So they should leave Afghanistan. But but what will happen when, if they do leave? But when I follow the media and also uh, maybe uh, uh, you, you also follow that they are, they are trying to make big this issue that civil war will happen in Afghanistan but nobody want to talk about today's civil war that uh, all of these crimes are happening under the name of democracy they're betraying the people and um, uh, they are not honest for the people because it's impossible to bring these values by enemies of these values and it's impossible to bring peace by war See, they say war of Af Iraq is bad war, war of Afghanistan is good war. I think war is war. And also they occupied our country, our history showed we never accept occupation. English people three times, so not people, of course, huge difference between nations and wrong policy makers, do not be misunderstanding. But they want to occupy Afghanistan. They. Uh, um, uh, faced with resistance of my people. Russia as a superpower country want to occupy faced with resistance of my people. If U.S. government and its allies that they continue to the strong policy, I'm sure in the near future they will face with resistance of my people. As today my country look like a sick body that everyone want to have their own peace instead to support this, part, this um, sick body honestly. No question that at this catastrophic situation we need helping hand of you Democrat people of every country and U.S. here that as you, I think you also agree with us that no nation can donate liberation to another nation. This is the responsibility of our own people to bring these values. Why we are risking our life is struggling because we believe women rights or freedom is not a bunch of flowers that a UK government or U.S. government gift us while they are not honest in the meantime. But we need your helping hand. If uh, last time I came, my friend, I'm sure that they were worried that as they, they know about me, that introduced me as a Democrat on behalf of other Democrat and wiseless people, I am in front of you. In my country, nobody is sure when I'm going out to be alive. But when I died, or many dying in Afghanistan, it never means that they are wise getting silence. But we, who keep, um, keep, um, keep uh, how to say, keep high the silence that do not, do not be silent, <coughs> this wise, do not be silence. These are the democratic minded people. You people that uh, to raise your voice as much as you can against injustice in Afghanistan, first, first of all, put pressure on your government. Um, earlier this year, I was in Washington when President Barack Obama made his big speech about Afghanistan, his first one, and he, talked about this surge, and, but he also talked about sending civilians in to rebuild the infrastructure of the country. If he were sitting here now, what would you tell him to do? Uh, to Obama. Of course, first of all, on behalf of my people, I will say that if really you are honest for Afghan people, not only criticize the wrong policy of Bush administration, which was war crime, you must apologize to our people, first of all then to your people. And second, I will say that as soon as possible end this tragic drama of war on terror, which is war on innocent civilians. Stop this war crime. Because you are supporting the enemies of our people. See that they are supporting, they want to bring Ob uh, Mullah Omar and also Gulbuddin Hikmati are also to join the government. Situation will be more worse, more bloody. And I will tell him that women of our country is like, um, First of all, they are like your wife, Mrs. Michelle, that if Mrs. Michelle 
happening, how all of these crimes that happening in Afghanistan happened to Mrs. Michelle. First of all, get peace, peace, and then burn, then use white phosphorus or cluster bomb. Then you set silence and say that uh, sending more troops in Afghanistan, which more troops will bring more war and more conflict. Or you, do you want to bring Mullah Omar uh, or Gulbuddin also join the government? Anyway, as um, unfortunately, U.S. government is not honest for Afghan people. And if uh, Obama administration do not stop this strong policy, I'm sure not only faced with the resistance of my people, day by day he will lose his support, first of all, among his people as well, and among Democrat people around the world. And also, sometimes Obama do worse more than Bush. But he's doing now in Pakistan, in border areas of Pakistan, these drone attacks. Well, if war if will start in Pakistan, first of all, it will have more negative impact on Afghanistan as a neighbor country. Will have will take shelter in uh, these terrorists in Afghanistan. If really Obama is honest for first of all Pakistani people as ordinary Pakistani people, they are saying they put the name of these madrasas Taleb making factories. He should close the door of these Taleb making factories. Educationally, must support my people. See this seven years. 18 billion dollars they gave to Kazi's government, but uh, more than 18 million people day by day they're getting poor as they live in less two dollar a day, and even some mother of my country ready to sell their babies for ten dollars. But Kazi, only in two week of election, he spent 85 million Afghani. It's a big question for our people: How we got this money first, second? It's enough that people for seven years know him very well. Why he spent money for election? And many other discredited known who are running for the election, that they, most of the ministers of Karzai was, and everyone know them, and even wanted criminal, even Taliban are running. How they receive that much money? Of course, from the international community, means US and its allies giving to their puppets, invested lots of money on them, and now they don't want to lose them because they need them. They keep situation through them in danger like this to stay longer in Afghanistan because of their own strategy policies. And now in background, you know, in background, 18 million dollars they are going to spend to make another Guantanamo jail. And even they banned supply of water that people they themselves leave this problem, this background uh, place city. That then it will be easy for, easier for them to make their military base there. And everyone of you know you know, know that. Uh, when they have their military base there, it's very easy for them to control Asian powers and also have access to the uh, gas and oil uh, Asian republics. And also they changed Afghanistan to the center of drug. The seven years, not only Taliban become powerless, even uh, they, they, uh, they changed Afghanistan to the mafia state as 93% of opium produced from Afghanistan and after oil and arms, they are receiving lots of money through this dirty business. You know, every year, through dirty business of opium, $500 million goes alone into the pocket of Taliban. And since 2001 until now, 4,500 increased. Brother of Hamid Karzai is a famous drug trafficker, Ahmad Wali Karzai. You know, it seems like that, um, to make the rabbit, to have the responsible of carrot. <laughs> I hope um, I said right this, 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 this power. You know, that's, that's what's going on there. Then they are paying money to such a mafia government to struggle against the stopping planting of opium. Is it possible? I think Mr. Obama would have met his match if he, uh, if he had a conversation <laughs> with you. Should we, uh, should we go to questions from the floor now? Who, who might have a question? Lady over here in the green. Hi. Uh, firstly, let me just say, I mean, it's fascinating listening to you and very eye-opening. Um, but just sort of coming at it from the other side, I guess, I don't know what Mr. Obama would say back to you, but my question would be, what would you like people to do that they could, and not only what would you like them to do, but what would you like them to do that they could see would have the results that they might like to stop the mafia government? to start developing the country? Because just, I mean, off the top of my head, you withdraw the troops. Well, what happens next? When you say people, do you mean well, troops so or do you mean you Afghani mean, people? No, 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 no. Um, well, either the British military or the American military or Mr. Obama, Mr. 
Brown or Mr. What's his name? Mr. Mandelson, in fact, because, you know, he might be our next prime minister. Um, really? <laughs> Mr. Cameron. Um, no, what would you actually like them to do? Because they will tell you, we withdraw, it gets even worse. Oh, yeah, I said earlier that uh, itself is like a civil war today. You know that every man, tens of women, commit suicide. On 8th of March, you women get uh, uh, um, uh, celebrate this day with lots of happiness and hope. But in Afghanistan, at least media give report three women, they set themselves on fire. And also that uh, uh, rape cases that, as I said earlier, that is historical. And they are not only Taliban they are doing. Those who are in power, you know one example of Bashir, I'm telling you, that who is um, uh, uh, Bashira is uh, um, a young girl, who 14-year-old girl, by three men has been raped. One of them is son of the member of the parliament. His name is Haji Painda. And this Haji Painda not only sent her son to the jail by document changing the age of her son less than 18, that do not be punished. How we should stop uh, these rape cases? And also many other ones, at least a little bit now I said in this book also, very clearly I said with more examples how you should support in person as well. For example, first you met your politician, these Democrat MPs and Democrat minister who are, you, first message of you should be for them that silence of good people is worse than the action of bad people. What are you doing there that all of these war crime is happening in a country like Afghanistan that this seven years is not less that a superpower country with 40 more countries is powerful or middle-minded terrorist people like Taliban who created by U.S. government and their domination has been destroyed. It's not less that they know enough about the enemies of Afghanistan. And uh, they should raise their voice against the wrong policy of their government. Educationally, they must support, as I told you, that education is a key to emancipation. Most of these people go outside, they do demonstration, they are not educated. They are very suffer people. But if they get education, how much better they play their role than today? But if the, and also, if the troops leave, Malalai, do you think the education system can be built up again? Do you think, do you think the Afghan people can sort their own problems out? You know, now we are fighting two major enemies. External enemies, these occupation forces from the sky, throwing bombs and killing innocent civilians, at least one example I told you. But you should go to the website of Professor Mark Herald, this Democrat beloved uh, American man, who dedicated his, her, his hours for telling the truth and this tragedy. Thousands, thousands, more than 8,000 innocent civilians has been killed, less than 2,000 Taliban after 9-11 tragedy. And the external enemies that they are Taliban in North Alliance fundamentalists, that North Alliance fundamentalists in power who are brother and creed of Taliban continue to their fascism. But Taliban, only leader of Taliban is not in power. They invite many times to join the government in Gulbuddin Hekmat, yeah? So we are squashed between two powerful enemies. We are fighting against occupation, not only against this dirty-minded bunch of killers. I think you are also agree with us, this is prolonged struggle. It's not easy. But now I think you are also agree with us that fighting against two powerful enemies is much easier to fight against one enemy. These external enemies that they has no foot among the heart and mind of our people. Later I should give you one example to know how much people hated them while they are in power and they have private jails. These occupation forces, their government, do not give money and weapon to these northern lines who are in power and make them day by day more powerful, which is more risky. And also their troops stop drone attacks, these bombing, killing civilians, <coughs> even white phosphorus use. Then it, a little bit let us to breath in peace, then we know what to do with our internal enemies, with our destiny. It's not easy. Of course, they are wolves, but we need your support. We need support of your Democrat people. It never means we want occupation. We want liberation. And liberation is not something that someone donates us. You know, we want your support, practical support. For you, it means little will be very little if you do, but for us it means a lot. Bring positive changes slowly, slowly, it's getting wider and the situation will bring more positive changes. Another question? This lady here. Um, if you came to power, what will you do to bring jobs in terms of bringing foreign currency to Afghanistan? And secondly, what will you do with the proceeds of your book, please? Yeah. 
the book, uh, first question you said that. So how that would you bring jobs to the people of Afghanistan? But it needs to be in foreign currency if you want to be like independent. Yeah. How, what sort of jobs will you bring? Where will you get the money from for those jobs? Yeah, no, as now I try my best to serve them as much as I can. First, to make them awareness, close contact underground with. Uh, uh, these victim families that I have, these the girls who get raped, and they say if the government do not listen to our voice, we kill ourselves. And now when I'm going, I will have meeting with Bashira, sorry, with Gulafros, uh, that who has been brutally raped. Uh, and also that uh, I met Bashira, Samia, many of these kind of girls that must give them not only hope, in the meantime, that make them awareness about their rights that it's not something give you or it's not the solution you kill yourself. So you and also collect the collect the document of their crimes. Yeah, you said what, what job I'm doing, of course. How much jobs will you bring to the country? Independently, independently, of course, uh, alone nobody can do anything. But together with my people, together with Democrats, we can do a lot, as I said, if these for U.S. and its allies and their puppet that who are in power, if let us a little bit breath in peace, we can do. But by all of these risks, but now we are risking the life in underground contact and try our best to bring positive changes. For example, this book that I wrote, I hope not only morally opened the eyes of the people around the world to know better about the bitter reality of Afghanistan, <coughs> about the occupation, about the role of the wrong policy of their government, also financial raising, that some money to go educationally we want to support them, to build some schools, as to go for health uh, problems, that they have many health problems that to be supported. Most of them are women and children. You know, every 28 m minutes a woman die in Afghanistan during childbirth, and many violences like this. Hormone Clinic, you can see on my website that we have this building, but the government do not support but uh, now they want to close the door of this clinic as they close the, uh, they close the door of Hamoud, uh, sorry, orphanage that we had in Faro province. And many other Democrats, some NGO few we have Democrat, but most NGOs have. And some Democrat party we have, they lost their project day by day. Rawa is a woman organization. You should see their website to know better about the tragedy of Afghanistan, that still they are underground. They are risking their lives. And many activists have been told, we are trying to serve our people through this ways that, as I told you, it's not easy, that we are fighting against occupation. History shows that fighting against occupation at least takes 10 years' time. And also, they shed the blood of people and support the enemies that it takes time that to first make give more awareness to people, then next to them do struggle. As this 30 years war, we almost lost everything. But we gain one positive thing, which is, which is political knowledge of my people improved a lot. And they, they, they are the ones who built the country. And Malala, the second part of the question was the proceeds of the book. Where are they going to go? They are going, I said that, uh, the, this book also for humanitarian support, for education. For these orphans, widows, some Democrat NGOs that, for example, one NGO like OPOC, I was activist, that they, they day by day they lose their projects. Hopefully that it will raise some money as well to go for this cause, for and, good And cause. you set up a clinic, haven't you? I think the Yeah, the, the clinic, because of lack of time, I'm not explaining that only referring, giving referring to you, that many of this information on, by, on in the book and also on many websites. But this clinic, Harmon Clinic, on February I went there, this donors, maybe you also know that they are giving money for some project and they do ag agreement with uh, supporters or uh, these some NGOs, then they stop. For example, this hormone clinic, the story you can read in this book that I was the one who opened this, this clinic. And um, a good building, and ha we had three doctor in the beginning the the governor of pharaoh and commander was not those who in power was not agree with me to open that see we do humanitarian activities why you do not allow us with all details in this book you can read this story anyway we opened this clinic but now we have only one doctor the three doctor we had two other we lost because of lack of money 100 or 150 or 200 
sick people coming, most of them women and children, because this uh, NGO activities is for women and children. But they are going, most of them, hopeless. Only for 30, 40 patients, we are giving elementary medicine, like Panadol, like pasta more, like cough, uh, m m something for coughing like that. While we want to improve the activity of this clinic, that to have more doctors to serve these patients, that most of them are women and children, and it, many other. Is it that. true that Afghanistan has the second highest um, rate of, of death during, uh, during childbirth in the world? Yeah, it is the official that uh, official figures that um, uh, for uh, sorry health minister of <laughs> Afghanistan also gave it. Hopefully, my in this report that will be here. Anyway, if you want to my email, I can give you this paper is not here. Exact figure reports that how many every year dies an Afghanistan woman. That uh, as I said, every uh, few minutes a woman die in Afghanistan during childbirth, yeah. and is enough. And uh, you also know that without I say, as at least you got that from media. Yes. Another question. <laughs> oh, you're very keen. <laughs> um, Hang on. <laughs> um, would like to say it's a great honour to have you here and to see you so close. You've been you. a personal hero of mine, and I can say for the majority of Afghan people, they see you as the soul of Afghanistan and Afghan people and you speak for our, for our, from our soul. Um, there's so much I'd like to say to you, but we have one question mainly that a lot of Afghans have, and they'd like to know, you know, what, what do you think are the solutions for Afghanistan? I mean, it's such a complex country and there's a lot of players involved, and certainly the West isn't always helping us, especially when they do lots of arms deals with Saudi Arabia and indirectly mm. that supports mm. the Taliban, you know, yeah. so yeah. what kind of solutions do you see internationally and nationally within Afghanistan and how can Afghan people support you? Yeah, first thanks a lot for your support. As always through my speeches and interviews, always I'm saying and now that uh, there is three alternatives, which is so clear, always I'm saying that first that uh, they must try, if really U.S. and its allies, this government harness for Afghan people, try to make slowly, slowly disarm these North Alliance fundamentalists. And instead that they are supporting them more. These, these, uh, uh, these warlords who were like, uh, I told you, like mice become wolf. And also uh, this, um, try to end the drama, this tragic drama of war on terror that ki killing innocent civilians. Second alternative, that together with you and they must put pressure on neighbor countries like Iran, Pakistan, Russia, Uzbekistan, etc., who support Taliban and also these North Alliance. They still have their puppets. The third alternative is the main alternative to support the democratic minded men and women of my country. We have a lot, only a bunch of killers we don't have. As an Afghan, I'm sure you know them very well. More than some Democrat parties, we have Democrat intellectuals in Afghanistan, high educated professors. But there is no honor job for them. Government do not support them. And let's to, uh, make them empower. They are able to fight against terrorism and fundamentalism. But they are, still they are risking the life, underground contact. They do not sit silence. On behalf of those Democrats I'm in front of you, why they want to kill me? Because I want to bring positive changes. Because I'm telling the truth. Because I'm raising my voice against injustice. These are my crimes. And, and also Afghan people, sorry? Why do you think the West is not supporting these people? Oh, yeah, I told you. I told. Hang on a second, yeah. ladies. Hang on. I said that they, they occupied Afghanistan. My sister. They occupied Afghanistan, and women rights for them was good reasons to occupy Afghanistan. While they pretend to you people around the world, for the first time we brought women rights in Afghanistan. In this book also you can see, which is quite lies. Let me read you the report of New York Times. Uh, which published in 8 November 1959, says that Afghanistan women left the wheel, a new world of freedom, spiritual as well as sartorial, has been opened to the women of these Muslim nations after centuries of seclusions. And this is another proof that I have a CD also I have, but now time to, no time to play the CD for you that the woman seem like you Westerns in centuries like 70 and 80s with open ears as they wish we are close, seem like now I'm in front of you. They, they had job and they played their role, but 
Even this seven years, we didn't got, didn't gain this limited rights that we enjoyed in 2018. In these pictures, how the girls with the uniform of school, even without a scarf, if you recognize, they are walking, they go to school. But now, your government say we build the schools. But when the girls go to schools, they get poisoned. On April, hundreds, media of Afghanistan even give report, they become poisoned. If your daughter get poisoned, go to school, tomorrow you dare to send her again to school? If your daughter went go to school and the way they get kidnapped, you dare again to tell to your daughter go to school? If through assist on face of your daughters, again you dare to send them to schools anyway. But they don't want to come women rights in Afghanistan. They keep situation in danger like this. Again, I'm telling you, my sister, because they occupied Afghanistan and they don't want to leave Afghanistan very soon. And this is our responsibility to accept risks, to accept all of these hardships and do struggle, not sit silence, because we have two ways to tell you better and clear. One way, do compromise with these warlords you will have very good life, good job. Otherwise, say my experience, I will enjoy it in the parliament, good salary, everything I had, everything, more than you believe. My family as well, and my friend. And second way for us is that, to raise your voice, not sit silence, don't do compromise. Try to expose their mask, and try to bring your message to Democrat people around the world as we believe in international solidarity. Why they? Uh, ban me to go out because they are afraid from the truth. I open your eyes and then you raise your voice against the, the, your government, then it create problem for their puppets in Afghanistan. You know what I mean? They took my diplomatic passport, they banned me to go out. They banned me from media because I giving more awareness to my people why they know a lot, but tear the mask of these wallows, some those who do not dare to tell the truth. You know what I mean? And that's why they expelled me from, they banned me from media as well and many example like that. I've asked you. Not uh, only me, our, our people, but as example, I'm telling you me, if, uh, because I'm in front of you. Apologize not to say that I did a lot. No, I, it is nothing. And hopefully that as long as I'm alive, as I have lots of energy to serve my people better than today. I've heard you asked the same question many times. Surely life is better now than it was under the Taliban for women. Life of women is better than period of Taliban. Life is better now, surely, than when under the Taliban. Do you, you know, think yeah, that's true? When you go in Kabul, you see some large buildings, ex luxury hotels, expensive shoppings, like city center. Maybe you heard about city center. How much expensive? I don't dare to go there. How about my people that at least I have enough food to eat? How about them? That even they read to sell their babies for only nine months, baby, in Herat? Five months baby and whore for only $10 because cannot feed them. Cannot, don't want to see that her uh, babies die, even on TV they show. And these things do not solve the problem of our people. While $18 billion they received. And also this privatization is another enemies of our people. They make some private expensive um, uh, schools or universities in Kabul and some big cities to deceive you people. Uh, but only the family and children of these officials can go, but not my people, most of them that they cannot. My sisters, my brother, who are studying in the university in Kabul, they are not happy with the lessons because best teachers going to the, uh, these private schools and universities and good salary giving them, but in the school for months they are not giving salary. It's enough only you go to see uh, Rawa's websites if to know better about the, uh, the, the corruption, transparency, transparency International website, Human Rights Watch website, if you see. Anyway, but uh, in faraway provinces, just with a blackboard, and under 10, they are studying, which is hope. They, it shows they're eager to education, but we want to improve. Another question over this time. That lady over there in the uh, pink. Do you think um, uh, conditionality on aid has been used very badly in the past uh, around the world? But do you think that uh, there could or should be, or if it would be useful, to have aid conditionality conditional on women's rights? 
Should, o should aid only be given um, if women's rights are improved to Afghanistan? I think that was the gist yeah. of the question. Yeah, I said only in some, condition. you know, only in some big cities they did some, as I told you, some school they built, some private schools, also some luxury shops to deceive you people around the world. But in faraway provinces, and most of provinces, not the same. As I said about corruption earlier, but so is I'm, the aid I'm telling you, I'm telling you the others of some democrat parties, some democrat NGOs. While most is corrupt, but few is really they work, they want to work. I'm giving you their address. You should be in contact with them, financially, practically support them, then follow their activity. Really, honestly, they work or not. As they lose even their project, you know, they want to close the door of orphan, the door of the door of clinic of Pharaoh. Hamoud Clinic, when I got the award of uh, international award from Italy, it has some money as well. I gave this money to Obak. I said, please don't close the door of this orphan, this clinic. And you should support this kind of people. Also, some Democrat activists, now a kind of committee these Afghan made, I think this is one year, that the name, exact name I'm giving you through my email if you want, that um, they follow the case of these victim families that they want to make more document and they knock the doors of the people as most of people are suffer and they're collecting document risking their life because they want to physically this criminal must be brought one day into the court and and they are, most of the more young generation and they are risking their lives i'm giving their address please support them when to be international con attention then it is giving also hope and also it will have well, be positive, I think. I, I think you also agree with me. But uh, they are risking their life tomorrow. They will kill them. It's very easy because they followed, they're collecting the case of their documents, crimes. This 30 years, they did not only 30 years, now they are doing. And they need your support. <coughs> this address is uh, Justice, I don't know, Justice Committee uh, for Afghan Victims that has a name, a, a sentence. I'm giving them that they have their website and their activists. Please support them. Are there any other NGOs or, or aid organizations that you think are doing a good job in Afghanistan? There, there are, but now I'm mentioning the name, but um, there, there are few, but uh, I, should, I should give you also by email the correct name, like uh, OPAC, I said, like HOKA, like Raw organization, like Hambastagi party, while most of these parties who become registered, not democratic parties, only beautiful name they put on their parties. And also you should raise your voice against that Kambach that they put in jail against this uh, wrong policy of government. You know, Kambach is a young j journalist. From, uh, he was a student in, uh, of university. They, uh, he downloaded an article from Iranian website, maybe you heard about. They put him in jail, announced to be hanged, and now despite national and international condemnation, they announced to be in jail for 20 years which is so ridiculous, wanted criminal or in power. You should raise your voice, first of all, against that injustice in Afghanistan, that why combat should be in jail, that they won't bring Mullah um, Omar. You should say to Mr. M Mrs. Millib 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 Millibar, Mr. Mr. David, that what are you doing? David, if your son will be combat, you said silence and enjoy your life here? No. Other question? All right at the back. Just about the, the American troops and the British troops in America, in, in Afghanistan, if they're not there for women's rights, well, what do you think, what reason are they there for? What, what is the reason? Yeah, I said three reasons earlier. First, occupation, because why are, they, why are they occupying? Let me explain. I said that before also, because my English may be not good, you do not reach me. You know, it has three reasons. First, geopolitical location of Afghanistan in the heart of Asia. When Afghanistan, there will be their military base under their control. They can treat very well China, Russia, Pakistan, Iran, etc. Yeah. Second, they have very well and easy access to the gas and oil of the Central Asian Republic. The third one, they changed Afghanistan to the center of track. And now, as I told you, alone Taliban received $500 million through this dirty business. And after oil and arms and the war, they received lots of money from drag. These are three, at least I told you briefly, most important reasons they occupied Afghanistan and they don't want to leave Afghanistan. And I'm sure if do not stop this wrong policy, opium will find its way on the streets of 
London as well and will destroy the lives of your youths as well because this is risky for, I think, for the world, not only Afghanistan. Lady at the back. I think, um, I think you've spoken very broadly about the political problems on a very general basis that Afghanistan has. I think it's very clear for a lot of us what those problems are. I'd like to ask you a very specific question with your permission about this year's elections. What are your predictions for the outcome of this year's elections? And what do you think the impact will be on Afghanistan going forward? Yeah, our people, as I have uh, underground and close contact by telephone with them, and unfortunately right now I'm here, not good time, because what it, it was very important in the meantime because of this launching of this book to bring the message of my people. Anyway, I will go back very soon in Afghanistan, but they have no hope for, for this election in, uh, because the vote and will of our people has uh, no role in it, first of all, and especially we experience in Afghanistan many time election. This is not the first election. We have a famous saying, it's not important who's voting, it's important who's counting. <laughs> That's our problem, you know. They all boxes in the hands of mafia, except Dr. Ramazan Bashar, those most of candidates, they are discredited and known faces. Even Kazi, this shameless puppet man running. Even Mullah Ashraf Abdul Salam Rakiti running. Sorry? What about Ashraf? Ashraf Ghani, it's enough that this four year, uh, he was minister for this puppet regime. And uh, when they, to know better about Ashraf Ghani, at least if he really was honest for Afghan people, when they made amnesty law, law this parliamentarian, he should, when they passed this disgusting law, he should raise the voice at least in the cabinet against this disgusting law. But because they signed this law, and he, at least he could resign the post when he couldn't help the people, and especially that he's nationalist man. And, and, and we, they, these warlords, they destroyed our national unity that's saying, I'm Pashtun, this is Tajik, this is Uzbek. That's why every journalist asking from me, what's your ethnic? I'm, are you Pashtun or Tajik? I said, no, I'm Afghan. One fundamentalist woman in parliament, few of them, when the day when I beat it, some of them uh, stand up, that was, uh, of course some was Democrat, but a few that fundamentalist Tajik ladies stand up, they are telling me, Malala, we support you because you are Tajik, not that we support you what you do and this struggle. I said, sorry, who told you I'm Tajik? I'm Afghan. Yeah, we had Amanullah Khan, this proudful man. You should know the history of Amanullah Khan, that he want to bring positive changes. He said, Uzbek, Hazaras, Pashtun, Tajik, all is these uh, ethnic Afghan. And yeah, we are Afghan, but during the, since the Cold War, these product uh, of US government, these warlords, and, um, and also then Taliban, and again these Northern Alliance, all of these dirty minders are a product of US government. They don't want to come national unity, you know? They, what are you saying? This word, divide and that, divide and? Conquer. Yeah, and they, that's what US government and Salais want. You know, when people fighting against each other, what they do in Iraq, Shia and Sunni fight against each other, then it's easier for them to um, be more busy with their destructive business as, as they do with the politics and occupy these countries. Anyway, and, and um, I, I can't trust on Dr. Ramazan Bashar Dosin. It's enough I said at least few examples. Is there any candidate? I told you, except Dr. Ramazan Bashar Dosin, that I can't trust. Why? Maybe it's a question for you. My Afghan, no, but let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Ramazan Bashar Dosin. He was planning minister of Hamid Karzai. He did survey. He said most of NGOs are corrupt NGOs. He want to close the door of these corrupt NGOs. Karzai was not agree. Then he resigned from the post. You know, he loved his character more than the chair. He loved his personality more than Sharaf and Wajdan. Who did you mean? Shema Amir by English. Amir, if I may tell you, my question: Sharaf and Wajdan, who did you think are the best friends? Yeah, yeah, and, and he was honest for Afghan. People that much become beloved, even he belongs to ethnic, uh, ethnic, um, uh, eth uh, to um, minority ethnic, means uh, Tajik. Um, and always they were under pressure, these fundamentalists was in power, insulting them and um, uh, betrayed them. Anyway, but people, 
but high words he found way in Parliament and become very famous. Now he's very beloved man in Afghanistan. And, and the Parliament, you know what this warlord's telling him when he, ex he exposed this corruption? He's mad. Same telling me, she's mad. And two other Democrats. On the election, President Karzai is very much the favourite. Could somebody beat him? Could... He's not the favourite. Isn't he? Oh, who? Hamid Karzai? Hamid Karzai just, uh, I think, to say the best puppet. I think this yeah. word is OK. <laughs> He's very expired puppet, but didn't become expired now, I think. It seems that, again, he will be the chooser of the, uh, the choice of the White House. Everyone knows that, uh, um, that another president of Afghanistan will be selected behind of the doors of the White House. Uh, we have a proverb that nowadays my people, they are saying to each other that the selection looks like that, the same donkey, but with new saddle. <laughs> <laughs> when I say the favorite, I think I mean on betting terms, perhaps not the favorite in other, in other translations. But is there anybody that can beat him in this election? Can we beat them, sorry? President Karzai. Uh, uh, sorry, maybe I misunderstood it. Like, <laughs> you know, I said that um, only one puppet can be replaced with another puppet because election under the shade of gun, warlordism, drug lordism, awful corruption, and occupation forces has no legitimacy at all. I told you we experienced in this seven years in Afghanistan. This is not the first election. You know what I said to Dr. Ramazan Bashardos when I met? I said, Dr. Ramazan Bashardos, I am telling you congratulations. But in the meantime, I'm telling you condolence because you are not puppet. If you sign the selling of Afghanistan, then I'm 100% you will be president of Afghanistan, but I'm sure I, I, that you don't know, and I hope that you know that this is not possible, because we believe the power of people is like power of God, but as I told you, that the boxes is not in the good hands, that even most of people vote. They don't allow that to be Democrat person president, but has one difference with parliamentary election. Let me give you that. Do not be misunderstanding. In parliamentary election, we have some chance for Democrats that as much as they can, they should candidate and run for the election. If they found way, even will be less, it's, try to be, it's good that to try the small voice of the people inside of the parliament to expose the mask of this criminal in their own house. What was my experience? I did there. And again, I want to go to this mafia parliament, which I said it's like zoo. Another question. This gentleman over here. Malalai, you remind me of Arundhati Roy, the Indian author. She has the same fire in her belly as you. But let me say to you that Afghanistan is a cheap war for us in Britain. And it allows us to live our expensive lives over here. We are not going to get out of Afghanistan Never, no. unless, unless mm. you make us do it. You make it costlier. What's your question? This, this is the well, this is a, more of a comment or other a statement to her. Unless you make it costlier for us to stay, we are not going to get out of Afghanistan. Sorry, the question didn't really have one. <laughs> it didn't really have one. For us. For eight years, we have been there. And we are doing our thing. I suppose the question is, people. how do you force the troops to leave? How do the Afghanistan people make the troops leave? What, what can you do? You know, what passage of time, we, I'm sure we will have the front, a, a national front. And I'm sure that the democratic-minded people will raise more their voice and will be wider. As in 2003, when I raised the voice, nobody dared to do that. But now a lot of people, they raise their voice. You know what I mean? It takes time. Also, people, they themselves will stand up. As our history never accept occupation, I said, what good lesson we gave to British government, I, I'm sure they remember. And also to, to Russia as a superpower country. But 
we will give them good lessons, same what Malala may want it. Should she run for president, do you think? <laughs> you know that to be puppet, I will be very soon president, not only me. We have many other that just I want to serve my people to be just a servant of them, just to teach them as a teacher as much I educated. And even I didn't finish my education, I want to continue that to better serve my people. I wish that just as long as I'm alive to be one of the best student of the hero and heroine of my country. But I'm sure one day we will have Democrat leader and or uh, sorry president will be man or woman, gender no matter. But if it will be a woman much better that prove to you that that woman also they, they can be president while they 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 they, they are in, in power in some country and we're proud for Sang Sung Cho. Hopefully, I said the name the, uh, of this uh, beloved and brave and extraordinary woman that inspires us. OK, another question. This lady at the front here. Well, it, it's a great honor to hear you raising your voice. And I've actually read your book. And it's very powerful, strong narrative. And I'd really urge everybody in the room actually to buy it. Now, uh, uh, you, uh, in the book, you talk about how you cannot do diplomacy and you can't negotiate with people who use the language of the gun. And you said if you actually negotiate with them, they will see it as weakness. Yeah. That's a pretty challenging idea. And yet, the history of peacemaking or bringing about an end of violence or conflict resolution is you have to talk to these hardliners whether you like it or not. So we had to talk to the insurgent groups. We had, they did it in Anwar province. They've done it with Hamas. They've done it, well, they haven't done it with Hamas yet. They've done it with the IRA. And this, this is how, what I understand when Miliband says, let's find there, in the, we say things like, I don't know if you will actually go along with this, that 90% of the Taliban actually are just poor young men who can get paid a few dollars a day for fighting for the Taliban, and it's only a small group that's ideological. So isn't there within there, that group some people that will be need to be spoken to to bring about end of violence? You know that these people, let me tell you one memory of me that uh, with, uh, at least with dad of Bashira when I had meeting. Uh, I think um, Glenn also remember uh, on that time she, as a journalist uh, was there and also made some clip and uh, report, good report about the uh, uh, Safa story of this girl. But has daddy telling me, Malale, if this government do not take their revenge, I will go with the Taliban to take revenge of my daughter from these northern lines, these warlords who are in power. You know, some kind of people or this kind of people that they're not going with Taliban to, to believe Taliban or accept Taliban just because of this cause. And also, uh, do not be misunderstanding that two kind of Mujahideen that we have or two kind of Talib. Two kind of Talib means good Talib is that Talib to understand that on that time become deceived by Taliban or regret from their past. Of course, they are, our people has no problem for, with, for them. And it's enough to regret from their past and set silence in their house. But these are the bad Talib, terrorist Talib, that they are terrible makers. And what this government that they are saying, that moderate Talib, they means Mullah Omar. Not, we have no moderate Talib. Why? Because many times, Kazi and White, Mullah Omar in power. If Obama, moderate word for Obama means difference, should raise the voice against Kazi, why you invite Mullah Omar in power? It self proves that for them, Mullah Omar means moderate. Oh, and, 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 and I think in no country, you know, I, yeah, some countries, the history, if we, we read, that uh, sometimes they, they do some diplomacy or some negotiation like that. But in Afghanistan, that these bunch of killers, that they are like Pinochet, Hitler, Khomeini, Mussolini, Soharto, to do compromise or diplomacy with them, it means that you betray your people or give them chance to be in power. This seven years, see, this seven years is a good example that the, the seven years they are sitting with them 
always they are organizing very expensive conferences all media busy with propaganda i don't know this uh, conference is about uh, um, about uh, health problem or about rule of the troops i don't know about uh, civilian casualties i don't know about women rights but the end of that is nothing it's a big question for everyone. First of all, they spend lots of money in wasting. And that's why we say this so and yes, they waste their money and blood in Afghanistan. And still they are wasting because supporting these terrorists and just playing game of Tom and Jerry with these terrorists. And and because as I told you again, I'm saying that because of occupation they occupied. And they, that that's why the situation of my country is different with some other country that you explained um, and what we know about. But Malalai, mm -hmm. is, it, is it possible to move forward? I hope you got the, the, the answer of your question. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you more about it. So it needs, yeah, it, it, needs more, it needs more explanation. But what is so clear is occupation. And what is so important that they betray truth. All of this shocking news that I told you tonight, did you hear some of them from the media? I'm not sure. Even the picture that I passed to you, I say these pictures, can I show this picture? They say career problem for us. Only this picture is enough to tell everything to you. You know, only this picture show because it's very, very good picture. But they don't show the picture of those casualties. You know, this civilian casualties, these babies, these children that only their faces are seeing everything, not only those who has been killed. And that's why truth itself is the way that to, to, uh, to bring democracy, women rights, human rights, if to serve us, tell the truth. That's the solution. Is it possible for your country to move forwards if some of the Taliban, at least, are not part of the solution? So, uh, some of the Taliban are not? Yeah. Isn't it, as the lady's saying, in the past, <coughs> insurgents, terrorists, have to be part of the solution for a country that has been fractured, that has been at war, to be able to make peace with itself? But for your country, is some of the Taliban will have to be part of that solution, do you think? Hopefully they do negotiate with good Talib, but I can't trust. It's up to you, you trust or not. This is just a game. Again, I'm saying, we have no problem with good Talib. We wish that they talk with Talib. Good Talib at least introduced to us, this is good Talib. Is Rahmatullah Hashimi is good Talib enjoying in the Yale University? Said no apologize to our people when they destroyed both other status, he defends. Chief District of Mosakala, you are you are troops as they are in Helmand province. Chief District of Mosakala is a famous killer Talib. His name is Mullah Abdul Salam, who did massacre in Mazar Sharif. You know, in Mazar Sharif, when Taliban was in power. But this right now, he's Chief District of Mosakala. Say no word against Taliban and do not expose the crime of Taliban. First of all, didn't say apologize to my people. How we should trust? We never can forget. Yeah, if they say to forget, never they can forgive because they committed crimes. First of all, must be powerless, not only apologize, then they must be brought to the ICC, International Criminal Court, not only National Court, but they are in power. And in and, and, and their opinion, they are good Talib. You know, they are good Talib. Those who did massacre, those who did our, destroyed our Asar Farhangi or Chimigan. Yeah, they destroyed our historical achievement, those who destroyed, and those who even raped foreigners, like Mullah Abdul Salam Rakiti, they are good Talib. Now they are in government, and now they bring more good Talib to power, which means Mullah Omar. Only Mullah Omar is not in power, and also Gulbuddin Hekmatyar. Let's, uh, let's tell you that, introduce to you which one is good Talib, that we should know. We've got time for one more question, so let's make it a good one. The lady in the red top over there. I hope it's a good one. Hi. Malalai, do you believe that you'll see peace in Afghanistan in your lifetime? It's not bad. Yeah, you know, I hope. I hope, but, uh, you know, we are victim generation. Until now, this 30 and 31 I become. <laughs> We saw nothing, just war, violences, suffer, rapes, shed the blood, etc. that they continue. And, but we are struggling with these two powerful enemies, I told you, external and internal enemies, with lots of hopes. In the world of hopelessness, always I'm saying there's lots of hopes 
First, this political knowledge of my people improved a lot, gives me hopes. Then their strong support and solidarity. As once one uh, European member of the Finland uh, asked me, Malale, could you give us the name of your party? I said, yeah, I have a powerful party, but unfortunately now we don't have name. This party member says these barefoot and these suffer, voiceless and uh, innocent people of my country, men and women. These are the members of my party and they support me. If today I'm alive because of support of this strong party, it is true. And, and because of lack of time, I can share more memories as I don't want to talk a lot about myself, as I told you, that just I do my responsibilities. But tomorrow, if I <coughs> will be killed, I have trust my people. And as we had, I trust the history of my country, I believe. And also, I believe in truth and also justice and these values that no nation can donate to another nation. I'm sure that my people will not say silence. They follow. This, uh, this wise and, and what I said, as I follow right now, next to them together, the path of democracy, women's rights, human rights in our country. As always, I'm saying, it's very easy for them to destroy all of the flowers, but they never can stop the spring, as we experience in our country. One day, I'm sure if I will be alive or not, at least I can tell you that this is long struggle, 10, 15 years take time. We are fighting against occupation and also these the bunch of puppets and killers who are in power. And even now, I was not sure that I will be alive, you know? Five times assassination attempts. And now that going, nobody can guarantee the life, of course. But it never means that I should afraid or sit silence, of course. I must be more fearless, more tireless to continue to the struggle. But even one day has been killed as a person, I'm not better than my people. But um, uh, I am sure that nobody, no superpower, and no, no one is able to hide the truth. When the truth will find its deserved place, it's like sun. No one is able to hide the sun. <laughs>